So this is a really important lesson for when it comes to working out what's the best method or materials for your presentation. You have to decide and you have to justify to the examiner what are you using and why are you using it? What impact has it on the final outcome? So we've looked at uh, mounting, we've looked at presentation, we've looked at borders, foam board, mount board, all those types of options. But at the end of the day, it comes down to the actual print itself, the image, and how is the image coming across to the viewer? The type of paper or material that you use to print on is going to have an impact on its outcome. In your backup of your course books, you need to have samples annotated. Okay, So ones where it works for the image, and ones where you think the material that you use take it, it detracts from the outcome, the end results, or the viewer's experience. And if you don't write about this, and if you don't say it, as well as show it, it, it doesn't show that mature level of ability when it comes to your actual present final present section on the marketing criteria. Okay? So we've got develop, explore, right? then we have record, and now we're at the stage for present. And these, where we want to get into mature bracket for all of the grading, this is where we show different samples, we say why, and then we move on to actually printing it and mounting it. So, um, we're going to look at the printing process again. We're going to introduce some different types of papers onto the laser jet, and how do you use that printer. And we're also going to be looking at the different types of paper we can use in the ink jet. And as you know, we've got three new inkjet printers. They run on pretty much the same loading system, but we need to make sure that we're up to date with that. So, uh, if we go to screen now, one thing I want to remind you is that when you're, presenting, or when you're printing your work, you always open up a new page with your desired outcome, as in the page. Your outcome paper needs to be preset. The resolution is always... 300 and you can do RGB or CMYK at 8 bit. If you have grayscale in there, anytime you bring an image onto that, it's going to be black and white. So you have to have those. These are all the way back to about 15 months ago, the settings that we did. 300 and that's a resolution for these printers. Industry standard, it's good quality. So for uh, A4 would be our, our outcome, i.e. what we're printing on the size of the paper. You open up an image and you do browse and bridge or file and open. Don't drag it from a file underneath, so don't drag from a folder and bring it all the way up. And don't place it. Right? Don't do place, you open it and then you bring it onto your page. So you've got one already placed on here. At this stage, the background is A3, the image is the size that we've got on it. So if you want, you can use your guidelines to remind you. So you can focus on your measuring, grab the corner, bring it down, it'll zero it now for you. So you can do all your measuring. And that's especially for people who are going to be using frames or want to downsize their print a little bit because they're going to double or triple mount on A4 foam board. Right? So it's really important to remember that if you're going to make it smaller so you can double or triple mount on foam board set at the paper size, you need to make your print a bit smaller. Going up into our file and ready to print, but before we do that, if I send that image across to the printer, I'm going to delay the printer. It's an unflattened image, right? and it takes more memory, it takes longer for the printer to spool and process. So we go layer, flatten image. This condense it in as a JPEG. Always do a save before beforehand and then a save uh, as afterwards and the save as means that you've got two copies of it now one flattened one unflattened file print and uh, we're just got a quick recap on the settings so we pick our printer the ones black ones up here are six seven and eight just so you know four is out of action until further notice because it's uh, check with me to see if it's working, and we just send it, let's say, to five. Only want one copy. And 
printer settings. There's a couple of things we have to check. The type of paper, and we're going to be looking at loads of different types of paper now, but the main ones that you're going to be using will be the preset one is for the paper that is down as luster, or oh no, semi-gloss, same as luster for these printers. And the other one that you're going to be using is a photoglossy, and that's for premium glossy paper as well as backlit paper, which I'll show you in a few minutes. You'll need to speak to me individually if you're using any fine art papers or matte papers. We'll need to talk about those. There's so many on the market, I couldn't go through them all now. But the ones we have available here, you're only going to be using the luster, under the photo paper section, the luster, glossy, or semi gloss. Color, speed, all these things will be set fine. Make sure that this is the paper you're putting into the printer. And always click borderless. I always click borderless because it then you print you get what you print on the screen from the screen. Always check the page layout that these two match to what you're putting into the printer. Okay, always make sure. We don't need to worry about reduce or enlarge because we're always bringing our images onto an A4 or A3 or A2 page. We're always bringing it there, so we don't have to change the size of it. And our borderless means that that isn't an issue either. And you can se select your landscape portrait format. It's really important you check these. If you don't check these two sizes and this size, then you can end up printing the wrong size image on the wrong size paper. I can't give refunds for that. Use have made a mistake. You use up our ink. That's why the print credit is there. Okay? So it can't reimburse you. Um, and after that, we're good to go on printing. The other printers. They, Slight difference in the layout, I think. So here we have to go to print settings because they're, I think it's an A3. So if you look at it, it's automatically set to A3. So we go down, we'll select our A4, and then we'll go over here. Same as paper is fine. I have a habit of always going in and selecting myself just in case a computer makes a mistake. So whether you print into the three printers up here or you print into the three printers at the back of the room, It'll, the settings are pretty much the same in the layout. <coughs> if you're printing to a, the laser net printer, the color one, which is the 4005 printer, give it a second to load up all, print settings, it's going to be a very different layout. With this one, you need to specify the type of paper that you're going to be putting in. Plain paper is what you've been doing your contact sheets on all this time. The ones that you're going to be experimenting with for your uh, coursework will be heavy gloss, cardstock, and transparency. They're the three that I've got available for at the moment. And you need to preset these. You need to have those available um, to remind yourself which ones are which. And they always will load in automatically through the, what does it say on there, paper source, leave it as automatic. And it knows that these need to go into a certain location. So we'll go and have a look at the printer now. See the camera back to follow me. You need to tell me so I can tell the rest of the class that you're putting in a specialist paper. Alright, it's really important. If not, you could send a job, somebody else has sent a job, it's printed on the specialist paper. What will happen is I'll tell nobody or everybody not to print. You'll come down with the, whether it's transparency, cardstock or heavy gloss. And it goes into the front tray here. The side that you're printing on, so in this case, this is the gloss side, and this is the non-printing side. The side that you want the image to be on faces down. The transparency that I give you doesn't make any difference, but every other paper will. Or the card, the cartridge paper won't make a difference either, it's to be either side. But for something that's coated with a finish, it has to be face down, and it goes in. Adjust the grey slides so that it fits in neat. You will find that it's going to take time for this to process. And this digital display will change up here. And it will ask you to accept the settings. Only press yes. And it will tell you what 
is being sent to the printer. So in this case, it's cardstock. It's telling me it's A4, and it's defining that it's A4 again, and you're just going through confirming it. That will then print your job. All right. These, the feed on it isn't fantastic. Sometimes it misses it, and sometimes it needs a gentle push. So just be patient. If it gets stuck or delayed or something like that, just let me know, all right, and I'll come down and help. But it's face down into there. Now let's have a look at some prints. So that's printing. Always remember to have your print credit. And um, always remember, really, really important, is that you've got the printing stick. Right? So there will be a printing stick for each printer. If you don't have the printing stick, you're not allowed to print. All right? Don't go and send a print to the printer thinking you're going to get the printing stick in time. Because somebody else might have it. So have this, then send your print job. You can set it all up, that's fine. But if, as you know, if you send something without the printing stick, it could come out with somebody else's paper, or it could just delay the whole system because we, we won't have the right print, we won't have the right paper in there or something like that. So make sure you've got that, make sure you've got print credit. So, we'll have a look at some different types of prints. We talked about, uh, let's go to basic, starting off with cartridge paper. All right, so cartridge paper is a, it's just a card, it's, it's, artists use it quite a lot, um, and it's, it absorbs quite well. It's heavier than plain paper, and it might give you that effect that you want for your image. So we've got two different images here, and these are going to be best seen in person, so after the video, once you come up and check them. It doesn't really shine, it doesn't reflect too much. It shows up blacks quite well, and it shows up the colours quite well. But as you can see, it's, it's not like plain paper, it's not going to fold in on itself. So it does give a nice finish to the end. These, anything that's labelled in green at the back, go through the laser printer, okay, the 4005. <coughs> so we got the, that type of paper. Then we have, we were looking at transparencies, or some people call them OHPs, or laser, or i never get other words for it. So these work quite well for images that show light coming through them. The density of the coverage of ink, let's say, doesn't, doesn't work as well. We have one that's better. But this can be a fun way of exploring, or you can photograph through these quite well, so the light shines through them, and then you can start photographing maybe people through them, or light shining through them. So they work and they go through the laser jet printer. You can explore with these, experiment with them, try different things, all right? They do melt, but I don't encourage any naked flames in the classroom. Maybe a hair dryer might make them melt, or a hand dryer. It's up to you what you're gonna try with them. But again, they're the laser jet, and they're the special paper under tray number one, the one that folds out. Then we've got a cardstock. All right, this oh, this isn't cardstock. Sorry, this is this gets printed under cardstock. This gets printed under glo heavy glossy. And this paper is the one that's got a shine to one side, and then it's dry on the other side. It's quite a nice paper, um, so it does work out a bit cheaper if you're doing prints of this quality. The blacks do come up nice. Right. So it's going through a laser jet printer. The weight of it is quite nice. You can't do a full bleed on this, so you can't print right to the edge. So you couldn't do a full bleed and then mount it on foam board. You'd always have a white border, or always have to trim down the foam board. It does have a tendency on a laser jet to have a bit of run, so the rollers can leave a mark sometimes. So if we look at this image, we can see that there's a run on the rollers down here. Okay, so you have to be careful. You might have to print it once or twice to get the, the finished outcome. But for exploring and documenting, these are the things that you can put in. Say, it's good, but it's not good enough. So that's the photo glossy one. That's the heavy card. Then we move on to the inkjet printers. So this is the standard one that we've been using for quite a long time, the Luster. All right, we have it in stock. 
three different sizes, A2, A4, A3. Don't know why I said them in that order. Um, and you're used to that outcome. Can do full bleeds, right? It gives a nice tonal range on all colors, okay? Um, and it's the one that's set preset on the printers. So the thing is sound is a semi, semi gloss. Right. So that's what we're used to at this stage. And they're on the inkjet printers, all six of them. But then we start looking at where we get ink uh, premium glossy on the inkjet and the difference. So if we look at these, these are inkjet premium glossy. It's not card, so it's not heavyweight, but it's got a really refined finish. Right. And it quite often works with particular projects. I find ones where it's kind of with dark tone range, really brings them to life. With something that should, it really depends. Something that's got vibrancy to it can really be lifted with this. All right, so you see the colors there. And we can see then, if we compare it to the one from the laser jet printer. So this is a glossy from the laser jet printer. And then that's the inkjet one over here. There is a difference. But exploring in your books, showing samples and annotating <coughs> or critiquing is really important. That's the premium glossy, that's the inkjet. We have got some of it. And then we move on to, I think which is the last one, the backlit paper. So we looked at transparencies, we see the coverage. This paper, there's not a huge amount of it left. We were lucky to get it. Beautiful finish. Quality, really, really good on the inkjet printers. It gets put through the printer, same as a premium glossy. So it gets set to a premium glossy setting. And it's, it's one that works really well if you want light to shine through. So if you want light to shine through your project, all right, if that's something that maybe you're gonna mount it in a frame and have lights behind it, works really well. It's used in bus stops, it's water resistant, all right? To the point you can leave it in a bucket of water for a whole weekend, come back, take your print out, and it's perfect. But we're not gonna be doing that with our projects. But it's one that, if you need it, you need to speak to me about it and why you're going to use it. And that's, again, the inkjet set at premium glossy. So, we've talked about the reason why we need to document our papers. All right, two, three samples in your books. Come together, maybe you just want to get an A4 page between four of you and you all print off a quarter A4. So you just put an image on each, save your, ink, uh, save your print credit. Um, try a couple of them, see which works best for your project. And the really important thing is that you annotate. We've looked at the printer settings, we've looked at the importance of bringing an image onto your paper size, and also the importance of the printing stick.